and an orange. Mark Scott of uh, Great of uh, England goes in this one. 14th in Tokyo, 10,000 last year. 14th in Eugene at 5,000. He's a better athlete than that. I think he comes into this probably with a little bit of fire in his belly, Mark Scott, for England. There were no UK entrants in the 5,000 on the Gold Coast back in 2018. There is uh, Jacob Crop. Watch him. The world number two this year from Kenya. He'll be a fierce opponent here. John Gay, well, he ran in the steeplechase this morning. Do not adjust your sets. He was fourth in the steeplechase exactly eight hours ago. The same up goes in this one, and uh, that fought Tanzania, but his best only 13.56. The Isle of Man athlete Malaki, 13.47, his best. Rama Koguana of Lesotho hasn't broken 14 minutes. There's Jacob Kip Limo. World record holder for the half marathon. He won the 10,000 meters here. Hasn't run a 5,000 this year. This is his debut over 12 and a half laps for this year. Solomon Ziossi, 24th in the Commonwealth Games back in 2014. Paulus of Namibia, Daniel Paulus. He's a, a 13.54 performer. There's Pat Diva, NCAA champion last year over 10,000 meters. 27.23 back in March, but hasn't really progressed since then. George Beamish of New Zealand. Tent in the world indoors over 3,000. Could be used for a slowish race. Uh, Yeshneel Karan of uh, Fiji, 15.26, his lifetime best. William and Ponsa of Ghana, no times for him at all. And there is Mark Scott, watch him. He's a fierce racer, took a wonderful bronze medal at the world indoors over 3,000 back in March in Belgrade. Matt Ramsden, he's a very quick 1,500 metre runner, a 351 mile of the Australian. He could be a danger. The Tanzanian Lazaro has never broken 14 minutes. Cornelius Kemboy of Kenya. Well, he's never run for Kenya before. Selected because he was third in the Kenyan trials. He's earned his place. Sable, well, he took a fantastic silver medal for India this morning and a national record in that steeplechase. He's got to be on tired legs. Rainer for Australia goes there. He's strong. 27-15 has the national record for the Aussies. And Nimu Bona of... Uh, Rwanda is there as well. He's a 13.15 performer. And Nicholas Kipakorea Kalemi, Kimeli, the world number one on the inside. He won in Rome earlier on this summer in the Diamond League in 12.46, making him one of the quickest men in history. Ninth in the Commonwealth Games four years ago. So, 20 starters then, 12 and a half laps of... <laughs> Well, how will this one pan out? Four years ago, and by the way, not a single finalist from that Gold Coast uh, 5,000 four years back is in this race. Not a single one. Joshua Cheptegei, world record holder at 5,000 and 10,000 since uh, 2018, isn't here. But in 2018, the 3,000 was reached in a pedestrian 8.47. They almost literally jogged the first 3,000 metres. Then the fourth kilometre things picked up. That was at 2.38, and the fifth kilometre was lightning fast at 2.25. There'll be one or two men here, I think, Rob Walker, who'll be looking for perhaps a similar sort of pattern in this race. I know that Matt Ramsden, a 3.34-1500 guy, would be delighted if the first half of this was on the slow side. He certainly would, Tim. He is a big, powerful performer. He's just on the right of picture now in the middle. I can't believe Sable has... Uh taking his place in the starting lineup after that epic silver medal in the steeplechase talking about the Indian just running in the middle of the group now just on the left of your picture the other interesting dynamic here Tim I know you do a lot of commentary on the Diamond League circuit when Camelli and Crop ran that Rome Diamond League it was absolutely sensational they both they tore chunks out of each other and produced the two fastest times in the world this year and then you pull into the mix Jacob Kiplimo trying to become only the fourth man. It's a strange decision from them, having initially thought that they would go quite hard. Do you know the other Australian we haven't spoken about a lot, Tim? Jack Rayner, I've come, the camera's focusing in on Ramsden. He's an excellent 1,500-metre runner for Australia. But, you know, just up on the shoulder of the leaders is Jack Rayner, national champion over the half marathon. And you know what? He smashed his 5,000 PB in Oslo, talking about the Australian, the mustachioed Australian, just tucked in behind the two Kenyans in fourth place. 13.06 in Oslo, so maybe if it's slow early on and then gets quick again, maybe he could be the Australian to feature. He looks pretty comfortable in fifth at the moment. 
Well, they're lapping athletes already. That's how slow it is. 5.23 at 2,000, at 2.44, that second kilometre after 2.39. So much was promised, but uh, it is pretty bizarre. Nipu Bona, a 13.15 athlete, pretty useful. The third Kenyan beginning to move up to the fore. And Kiplimo just shadowing that lead group. He's back in about seventh or eighth place at the moment. The uh, Namibian, or Tanzanian rather, Joshua there, back in about eighth. Mark Scott tucked in on the inside, staying in contact with everything up front. And Pat Deaver as well is there for England, NCAA champion last year. Ran a really quick 10,000 back in March in California, but uh, hasn't really shown anything like that sort of form since. A couple of 13.20 runs in May and June in the USA, but a little disappointing, really, as the season was supposed to reach its climax. There were so many fast races in the USA in March and April and May in the Californian sunshine, and many athletes can't replicate that when it really matters in the meat of the summer. The pace just beginning to pick up, I sense a little bit. Kenya now in one, two, three, and I wonder if from here onwards, the middle of the race more or less, they're going to start turning the screw. So many great talking points here, Tim. There's only been one clean sweep in the 5,000 metres. You were involved in it in 1986. Steve Ovet, Jack Buckner, and you got the bronze, and they are out front, but they may not have this all their own way, you know, because Jacob Kiplimo in fifth place will be full of confidence after that magnificent victory in the 10,000 metres. And I'm keeping half an eye on Mark Scott, who's tucked in on the curb, because although he's done great stuff over the half marathon, the Englishman took a world indoor bronze over the 3,000 metres. But there is a little bit of a breakaway group now with the New Zealander trying to stay on the back of that with John Gay. No wonder Gay's tired. He's been in the 3,000 steeplechase. But Kenya, one, two and three. A little bit quicker, 2.38, but they're, they're still sort of dawdling, Tim. Well, they are. That was a 2.39 first kilometre, a 2.44 second kilometre, a 2.38 quicker that third kilometre. So it is, again, a little bit like Mary Mara in the uh, women's 800, a seesawing type of race. Kiplimo looks very comfortable, doesn't he, Jacob Kiplimo? Who uh, was probably a little a bit disappointed with his bronze medal in the 10,000 at the World Championships. He had a bronze medal in Tokyo last year in the 10,000. He has so much strength, so much speed. He's now moving up right in behind that Kenyan trio because I'm sure he knows that pretty soon somebody will go hard. If they don't, then it becomes a glorified middle distance race because the time at 3,000 metres, well, it was 8.01. And for many of these fellas, that's very, very slow indeed. Good to see Pat Diva right up there. Mark Scott, I hope, is just cruising at the moment. He's a great runner, Mark Scott, best of 13.05 from last year. And he's a 3.35-1500 runner too. He's got really significant speed. But at the moment, everybody dancing to the Kenyans' tune, and I'm not quite sure why. Well, maybe the man to challenge that is Jacob Kiplimo. He's on the shoulder of Nimubona, and Nimubona of Rwanda, and six in the African champs over the 10,000 metres. And Kiplimo just towards the back of that picture, the Ugandan. There'll be so much excitement about his aspirations here, but he's taking on three really fast Kenyans two of whom are the quickest in the world this year. Matt Ramsden beginning to be dropped off the back, and so too Mark Scott. It's Pat Diva of England, now the highest placed of the two home athletes. But this is beginning to look a little bit metronomic here, and Kiplimo is sensing the danger. Maybe he's the only man who can stop the Kenyan clean sweep. He needs to pay close attention here, Tim, because I wonder if we're going to see a sudden burst of acceleration as we now edge towards the finish. Well, Kimeli leads, Krop in second, the third Kenyan Kemboy back in uh, third place, and now Kiplimo has moved into third place. He's beginning to realise that the surge is on with ten and a half minutes on the clock. We're looking for that four-kilometre split. And it will be at the end of this straight. And Kimeli winding this up. Clearly the Kenyans have discussed this. I don't think this is independent behaviour. They're trying to figure out a way to unlock the dominance of Kip Lima. This is 4K. There it is, 2.39. So not a super quick kilometre, but uh, not a slow one either. And that means that the questions are being asked now over this final two and a half laps. Because for these fellas, this is not quick. And they're moving away now, and Scott is going backwards in eighth place for England. I expected him to 
go better than that because really they've only been moving at around 13.20 pace or marginally inside that. They come to uh, two laps to go now and uh, good to see Pat Diva easing away there in what, fourth, fifth place. But Kimeli from Krop, from Kip Lima, who looks very relaxed in third place. Yes, the Ugandan is tracking the two fastest men in the world this year. Remember, if you missed it, they were side by side, Kimeli and Krop, when they ran 12.46 in Rome. It won't be anywhere near that fast, but all three of these men are well within their comfort zone. Can Jacob Kiplimo find the raw acceleration needed? He's arguably better at the 10,000 and better at the half marathon, but the Ugandan in third looks very, very comfortable. Remember, he's bidding to become only the fourth man in Commonwealth history to do the 5 and 10 double at the same games. Kimeli leads, 500 metres to run. The 10,000 metre champion, he's had plenty of time to recover. He should be fresh here. Jacob Kiblimo of Uganda in third place as they come to the bell. Will they light up the track here? 12.13, maybe 12.14 at the bell. A 62 penultimate lap, not particularly quick. That's not really going to test fellas of this calibre. Kimeli and Krop may be playing into the hands of Kiblimo here, or they are both surely pretty fresh if they're running some 30 seconds or so inside the tempo of their run in Rome. There's a wall of Kenyans now, a small wall of Kenyans in front of Kip Limo, but I fear, I think he's going to bide his time. He's going to leave it until the home straight. Surely he won't expect to come wide. He's going with Krop now around the outside. Look at that, hanging onto his coattails, stride for stride. The Kenyans kicking hard. He's the world record holder for the half marathon. Does he have the speed to go with these two? Kimali and Krop flailing arms now. And here comes Kalim Kiblimo like a machine, like a metronome, easing past them. But is he going to get there at the line? He is. It's the double for Uganda again. Kiblimo makes it a win at the 10,000 and a win in the 5,000. And the Kenyans were outthought and outraced. Mark Scott has rallied, comes home for a fabulous fourth place some way back. But my word, what a race that was up front. Reina coming home as well. Up in the top eight, Kiplimo's time 13.08. After a strange, strange race, the time at 3,000, remember, 8.01. That was outside 13.20 tempo. A super fast last lap there, bringing Kiplimo victory by the tiniest of margins. The Kenyans did everything they possibly could as we see some of the back markers coming through. He won by, uh, what, nine one hundredths of one, 11 one hundredths of a second. Kimeli taking the silver, dropped the bronze, and he was, uh, what, about two metres down. And Mark Scott, 13-19, a season's best for him. He uh, managed to ring out a really solid run, Mark Scott, from that one, when with about a mile's go, I thought he was down and out. Jacob Kiplimo is the toast of Uganda tonight, tomorrow, and for the rest of this season. He's beaten the two quickest men in the world this year who mounted a magnificent attempt to deny him the double. Full credit to Kimeli and Krop with the silver and the bronze. But despite the fact that it's not necessarily Jacob Kiplimo's best distance, he had enough down the home straight. He has stepped out of the shadow of his fabulous teammate Joshua Cheptegei <laughs> and follows in his foot.